Welcome to part two of our three-part series, guys. Ensure that you watch part one because today I'll be zoning in into two important structures that you must know for your upcoming examinations. Stay tuned. And today I'll be talking about two important structures found in the nervous system. The brain and its functional unit, the neuron. Recall, the brain had many functions, including coordinating movement, posture, thinking, learning, and emotions. But how are these functions achieved? These functions are achieved through the collaborative efforts of several important parts of the brain to include the cerebrum, cerebellum, medulla oblongata, hypothalamus, and the pituitary gland. Let's spend a little time talking about each of these structures. The largest part is called the cerebrum and it controls executive functions like thinking, reasoning, problem solving, learning, and emotions. Secondly, the cerebellum, located below the cerebrum at the back of the head, coordinates voluntary movement, posture, and equilibrium. Thirdly, the medulla oblongata. It is a vital part of the brain because it controls important autonomic or involuntary processes like breathing. Next, the hypothalamus, the homeostasis control center of the body. Recall, homeostasis is that process that enables organism to maintain a constant internal environment. Therefore, it is the hypothalamus duty to maintain situations like blood glucose concentration, osmotic balance, and the body temperature. Lastly, the pituitary or master gland. This structure receives electrical or chemical messages from the hypothalamus in the form of hormones, if it's chemical, so that it can communicate with other organs of the body. I will now examine the structure of a motor or efferent neuron. At this end, we have the soma or the body of the neuron. The soma houses important cellular structures like the nucleus and the endoplasmic reticulum. Also on the soma, you can see some little projections. These projections are represented to be dendrites. These dendrites receive information from the external environment and channel them down to this area right here called the axon hillock. Now in order for the message or the information to be passed down this long structure called the axon, an important process has to occur. This process is called the action potential. And for the CAPE students, We'll talk about this process in our final video. Now, on the axon, you are seeing some orange structures. And these orange structures are not connected, as you can see. There are some gaps between them. These orange structures are represented to be the myelin sheets. And the myelin sheets, what they do is they insulate the axon, right? They are a thick layer of fat and also on these structures you are seeing some little yellow dots these yellow dots are represented to be 
swan or oligodendrite cells depending on where they are located what these cells do is they secrete myelin right so that the axon is in a continued state of insulation again between the neuron you're seeing some gaps these gaps are called nodes of Ranvier, where saltatory conductions occur. Lastly, at the end of the axon, you are seeing some long projections here, which are reduced to some circles called the synaptic knob. Now, at this location, the format of the message will change. Yes, it will be changed from electrical to chemical in the form of neurotransmitters. All right, guys, high five. Now you know about the five important parts of the brain and the structure of a typical neuron, the motor neuron. Before we go, let's talk about some important terms and processes that you must also know. Receptor is a specialized cell that detects changes that occur in our environment. For example, I am in a well-lit environment and receptors in my eyes, like the cones that detect light and color, enables me to see and make this video. Effector receives the processed information from the brain or the spinal cord so that we can respond to the changes in our environment. An impulse is the message that travels down the axon following stimulation. A reflex action is a quick or involuntary action done towards a particular stimulus. The reflex arc is the path taken by the particular receptor during the reflex action. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this two-part series where I spoke about the brain and its functional unit, the neuron. Remember to share, like, and subscribe to my channel so you can see other videos. Bye!